All right, after you've deployed your Google Cloud app, we're going to finally start to get some real data and pass that into a machine learning model in the next video. We need to learn how to query data from APIs. So we're going to take some stock market data. We're going to take data from IBM's stock price ticker here. And we're going to use something called Alpha Advantage. And the data we get at the end of this should look like this, where we have a column for date, the price uh, opened on that day, how high the price got and how low the price got, what the closing price was, adjusted price, volume, and the dividend it pays. So stocks pay dividends and also volume stands for how many buys and sells in total that are happening. So if somebody buys a stock, that contributes to the total volume. If somebody sells a stock, that also contributes to the volume. So if the price is going down, there's more sellers in that volume versus like, you know, buyers. All right, so I'm going to get to um, VS Code first here. And on our VS Code, we are going to create a new folder within our repo. And we're going to call it services. And then I also I'm going to create another folder called test code. This is where you'll run basic Python scripts and we will run the test code for our app. So we're going to go ahead and create um, a, 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 a file called API call underscore test.py. And then we are going to install the library, relevant library. So install alpha advantage. This is a code that's maintained by the company called Alpha Vantage. It's a, this sort of it's a mature company. I, I'm not sure if it's still called a startup anymore, but Alpha Advantage is stock market data API. And then you can click stock market API data. And then you can get what we know as time series. So time series means like you're getting the data uh, every day. Let's see where do they put it? Did I pass it? Is it weekly adjusted? So yeah, you got daily time series. So you get the price on the daily or you get daily adjusted where they have to adjust the prices depending on what's happening. And then weekly and then monthly. I think I went with monthly in my example. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. So to access this API, you need to get a free API key. So you just come to alphaadvantage.co or just type in alpha, alpha, advan, uh, uh, alpha advantage and get free API key. So you'll do student and then say Penn State or wherever you're from, you type in your email and then you'll get a free API key here. I'm, you, I'm going to use the API key that I don't touch. I don't really bother touching it too often. So we are going to just install that code. So let me just keep that on the side here. All right. So then we need to also pip install pandas, um, which is also a good way to manage like data and Python and numpy arrays. And that's how you kind of pass data between machine learning algorithms if you use scikit-learn and things like that. So now um, you can follow the code on um, the link below if you just want to copy and paste here. So just for the sake of time, we're going to just type alpha advantage dot time series import time series. And then um, I'm going to just zoom in a little bit here for you guys so you can see what's happening. And then we're going to do import request import import json and then from pandas import json normalize there we go it's just kind of going uh pandas as ed all right so we're going to need this function from time series here Make sure everything's right. And then the first thing we're going to do is, um, I, it's still a little difficult to explain, but um, you can get this code from the blog, is that if you hit the API, so when I hit an API with the code, I'm going to get data from a server that I have set up somewhere. And if you hit it more than five times, it's going to say invalid API call. I keep this statement here. So like I can say every five minutes, I wait five minutes and then I get the data later. Um, so it's kind of useful. So 
Okay, now that we've imported our libraries and um, you want to keep this statement, it's just for catching errors or something goes wrong with the API. I'll explain it later on in the code. But basically, we're going to go ahead and create a function here called def time series underscore fun monthly. And then we're going to do ticker p and then two semicolons. So this is how you define a function in Python. And then we're going to go ahead and create a string. And what the string is, if we go to alpha advantage here, really quick, if we go alpha advantage, click stock market API, and I go to monthly adjusted. We'll see here that this is like the monthly price of stocks uh, for the last 20 plus years. So they'll take this URL. And if I go to this URL, I'll get like data out of it. I'm, I'm not sure if let's click it. Yep. So you'll, when you click it, you'll get all this data of a price. So this was the price, uh, yes, on I think uh, December 1st here, $150 for uh, IBM. And if we go to like IBM stock price, okay, IBM stock price is 160. And then um, on December 1st, it was 150, right? So this is like data you can feed into the machine learning model. And it's like very valuable to th these companies that kind of run code like this and yada, yada, yada. Um, but anyways, um, we're going to go here and you can take example code here to just go ahead and get that data if you want. But we want to get the code on every time our user does something with our uh, machine learning model, we want to get that data and pass it to the algorithm. So it's the most up to date data possible. So we're going to go ahead and uh, add some commented code. I'm just getting code from the blog post because writing it all out, is going to be very time consuming. Uh, for us. So here we're going to do URL equals and I'm going to just teach you how to pass. So if we go back here, copy, put this in a string, All right? So it's a string. So here you can see IBM is being passed and then API key equals demo. We're going to change that to uh, uh, curly brackets. And then at the end of it, we're going to hit dot format and then we're going to do picker and then key and what that means is that the parameter that we're passing into the function you know like a function x to y z um, this ticker is getting put into the symbol and then our api key that we need is going to be passed into the api key so we make the call and then finally our next bit of code here is we're going to do response equals request dot get URL and you can find this code on Google. It's pretty much everywhere. It's uh, not that difficult. Um, so we're going to pass this URL and we're going to use this request library. And what this library does is we're going to get a get request sent to the alpha advantage vantage server. And that will give us that data I showed you earlier with the JSON file. Um, we can even go ahead and just print it out to test it really quick if we want to do it. So here, and then we call the function time series and then IBM, and then we need to pass the key here. All right, so now we're going to call this function, hit the API, and we should get a response in the terminal. We won't see the data yet. Okay, we got response 200, so it went good. <laughs> but we need to make sure we get the data. This is going to be some validation code here. So you see how I have response 200. That means success. 400 means an error. And there's all these response codes uh, uh, with like HTTPS. So basically, you get the response worked or it failed. So we'll run it again. Oh, I didn't save the code. Always control save. All right. And then response worked. Okay, great. And then we're going to extract the data out of it. This is more validation code from um, from the blog posts here. I'm going to print out the dictionary and hopefully we get something here. There we go. So all that data I showed you earlier showed up. If I go to here, so all this JSON data. Uh, the price of IBM every single day, all that data is right. We've got that 
right here on your local machine that we can like save to a CVS file and then do some more modeling on top of that or whatever we might want to do, right? So now we need to convert this data that we're getting into, I don't want to print this out, so I'm gonna comment it out by doing control question mark. All that data uh, we wanna convert into a, a, a pandas data frame. So if you're familiar with um, scikit-learn as a data scientist, you can import this library and you can pass your pandas data frames to these algorithms, linear regression, clustering, um, whatever it might be. You might do some pre-processing. This is a really great library. I, I use it all the time. I think it's a fantastic resource if you wanna bring some of the cutting edge uh, to customers. But all that's going to happen is that we're going to take our response um, from the server and I got the JSON out of it here. So I call it response.json and then we pass it and get the headers and it's going to create a column header for every single thing. So for dividend amount and things like that. So if I do a return statement here, return PF equals and then we can print out yeah here let's go back here and let me clear the terminal and then i'll run the code again and there it is so you don't have that mess you had all that mess and now it's organized and then it's ready you can pass it off to a machine learning model or save it to a cvs file a csv file excuse me now that we have ran our code and we have tested it right we now want to take our code here and make it usable. So this is our test code file on the left-hand side. We're going to go to our service code file. All right, open that up and just do uh, API underscore calls dot py. And then we're just going to copy the code that we wrote from before. All this, and then put it here. So if something is wrong with this code, we can come back and test it locally. Uh, and then we can put it here on the deployment for other parts of the app to use. So um, what do I mean by that? So if I go back, so uh, what do I mean by importing and letting that access from the app? So I've created that APIs call file here. If I go back to app, I can type from services dot the file name API calls, right? So I have API calls right there where we have our uh, time series where we're getting the data. And then we can import any function out of that. So we can say uh, the time series fun monthly. So if I go back to my file here, API calls, you can have multiple uh, functions here. You can have function after function, and then you can make those function calls within your API app at any point in time. And it's, it's very useful for the tutorial. We're not going to do that in this section of the app, but in other parts of it, we might call the function for the model. So, all right, after we've done that, our next step is to um, test the Monte Carlo simulation. So we're going to take the data we pulled from the stock market and then put it into the roulette wheel. So um, do that for the next video.